Welcome back to your uh, YouTube channel ENC Tube. So we have a completed Death of the Leveler by Sh James Shirley, the poem. And we go for analyzing a read and responder questions and answers. Why does the poet think that the glories of our blood and state are shadows? The glories of our blood and state are shadows because they are not substantial or concrete things. They are impermanent. What do scepter and crown and scythe and spade stand for and what do they symbolize? So these uh, scepter and crown and scythe and spade is quite clear in the poem itself. Scepter and crown stand for the royal glory, splendor and power of rulers. Scythe and spade stand for the tools of workers. Scepter and crown symbolizes kings, that means authority, whereas scythe and spade symbolize common laborers, that means the mass. Why does the poet say that there is no armor against fate? There is no protection against fate. There is no shield against fate. It is the universal truth that death comes to everyone. Nobody can resist it. Nobody can protect him or her against death. Some men with the sword may reap the field. What does this mean? Brave and valiant rulers could attack other lands and occupy them. Alexander the Great, Napoleon Bonaparte and Adolf Hitler are good examples of uh, such mighty warriors, rulers or soldiers. What is the fate of the men with the swords who hope to reap the field? They are also T H E Y. So here, the men with the swords, they T H E Y. They are also fated to die. All are captives of the mighty death. What does death's purple altar refer to? Death's purple altar refers to the inevitable death. It also refers to the battleground where blood flows and the grounds are made purple with the color of blood. Thus it means bloodshed. What does the phrase victor and victim mean? Victor victim means 
the conqueror or the conquered. Conqueror and the conquered. The triumphant and the defeated. The master and the slave. What can survive in death? What are things that blossom in dust? Why? The actions of the just people, righteous people, the good deeds of the righteous people can survive death. The good actions blossom in the dust because people will remember them and the fragrance, the good smell of the good actions will continue to remain or waft in the air. Why is death called the Lebanon? Death is called the Lebanon because death shows no distinction or difference and carries of everybody alike, takes away everyone alike. High and low people, rich and poor people, strong and weak people, reducing them all to dust. Death is an equalizer in whose eyes everybody is equal. It levels everybody to one size, not one size, one size, one size. Equalizer in whose eyes everybody is equal, it levels everybody to one size, one size, O-N-E, S-I-Z-T. Next, read and reflect. Only the actions of the just smell sweet and blows them in the dust. All people have it to die. Kings and clowns, scholars and uh, literates, illiterates, scholars and illiterates, I-L-L-I. Illiterates means uneducated. I-L-L-I-T-E-R-A. Illiterates, rich and poor, high and low, strong and weak, will die and become dust. But the actions of the good people will be remembered as they continue to waft their fragrance even from the dust due to their good deeds. So that is what here we come to know. So after our death, our good actions will be remembered and we are going to live in the minds of the people just because of our good deeds. The glories of our blood and state are shadows, not substantial things. There is no armor against fate. The glory or our birth and our condition are simply like shadows. Not substantial, not concrete, not things that will last for long. There is no way we can escape from death. Whether we are born high or low, powerful or not, death will come to us and no shield of any kind will protect us from death. So this is what we come to know. Then we will go for the words taken from the poem and uh, the grammatical functions of the words. 
armor that is a noun function but but is a linking word a conjunction connecting word murmuring murmuring is an adjective boast boast boasted were where where is an adverb as well as an wh interrogative word cold cold is an adjective sweet an adverb smells sweet wither is a verb tame is also tame tamed wither withered that is also verb stoop stooped verb temple that is also verb reap reaped boast boasted bleeds that is also giving the grammatical function of verbs hope you have uh, understood repeat the video and go through the functions and look at the important question answers which will make you 100% sure about scoring A plus and share to your friends and ask them to subscribe and get benefited from this one. Wish you all the best. Thank you.